Good day. This week I wanted to cover off an issue that probably uh, yeah, narks me a little bit, and that's when a lot of commentators come out and say to retire independently, um, you need $1 million. Now more recently, as interest rates have come down, they've now said that you need $2 million to retire um, independently. Now I just wanted to go through some of yeah, my thoughts on that and uh, you know, the general people that we deal with um, that have you know, raised a family, um, put kids for education, paid off a house. It's extremely hard to get to one million, let alone two million dollars that they're talking about now. So I just wanted to perhaps um, dispel some, that myth that you, know, you have to get to these levels to have you know, a, a comfortable retirement. Um, so fortunately we've in, we live in one of the, the best countries in the world. We live in Australia, so we've got a great safety net that can help people out um, through their retirement. And obviously these are some of the issues that the, the budget that's coming up we're going to have to work through. But I just wanted to go through some, some figures. That if we've got a couple homeowner, they're retired, and they've got, say, retirement assets, financial assets, so superannuation, shares and cash, of $300,000. Now, under the new assets, uh, you know, the pension tests that are coming up moving forward, um, you know, these people will get themselves approximately an age pension of $34,000. Now, to supplement that, that'll pay for you know, you know, a reasonable living. Uh, I've said we are very much a lucky country, but if we want to supplement that, if we were to receive another $16,000 from the superannuation benefit, that represents just 5.33% of that money. Um, all of a sudden, that gets them to a $50,000 income per year. So that's you know, very, you know, comfortable living. You can you know have trips on that. You know, probably not big overseas holidays, but you can pay for your home and and living um, quite comfortably on those sort of figures. So let's have a look at someone that uh, is say, a conservative investor only invests in, in cash and they don't want to use any of their, um, their capital during their lifetime. And if they want to receive a $50,000 income like this, they're going to need, at today's low interest rates, $1.66 million and at a 3% return is going to give them an equivalent $50,000 per year. So who's better off here? At the end of the day, you know, it's income, you know, income is king, cash is king in terms of um, what we can do in our retirement. It doesn't matter, you know, what the top line figure is. Um, so if this investor here is, you know, not a share investor and they, and therefore will never see their money grow at all, they're just cash, they're going to have to get used to the low cash returns at 3% and they don't want to use any capital at all, you know, that's, you know, to get 50 grand per year, that's the lump sum they'll need. Are these people uh, any, um, you know, who's better off here? Well, look, we'd all prefer to be on this side of the equation um, and hopefully investing a bit smarter than these people, but yeah, there are people that still don't want to uh, touch any of their capital in retirement. But for me, this is the same apple. You've got the same amount to spend, which means you can do the same amount of things. Um, so for me, these retirees look exactly the same. Thankfully, we live in Australia where there is a safety net, and although we haven't quite made it to these levels, at these levels, that's a nice bit of cream on top of retirement. So you don't have to have one million, two million or three million to retire comfortably in Australia. You can have two, three, four, five hundred thousand dollars, and that's this beautiful bit of cream, which is perfect for, for retirement. Thanks for listening.